It is now time to move to our next destination, Jewberry Cemetery. Referring to your map, exit the courtyard and head towards the medieval gate of Monk Bar. To the right of Monk Bar, steps lead up onto the city walls. If you or one of your party has limited mobility, please follow the alternate route marked on your map. Once on the walls, continue until you reach a Star of David embedded in the walkway. From here, you can look through the break in the wall to see the plaque marking the site of Jubilee Cemetery. Stop here or further along the walls where there is more space to learn more about the Jubilee Cemetery. In 1984, archaeologists from the York Archaeological Trust discovered the lost cemetery of York's medieval Jews at the site of what is now the multi-level car park at Sainsbury's. As one of only ten known Jewish cemeteries in medieval England, and the only one to be extensively excavated, the cemetery in Jewbury offered a tantalising glimpse into the lives and deaths within this enigmatic community. The presence of a medieval Jewish cemetery in the Jewbury area has long been known from documentary evidence. In 1230, a sub-dean of York Minster, John Le Romain, was recorded as having sold a parcel of land adjacent to the already existing cemetery to the Jewish community, in all likelihood to expand the cemetery beyond its previous bounds. When the area suspected of being the cemetery was scheduled for development by Sainsbury's, the York Archaeological Trust was hired to conduct trial excavations to ascertain if in fact there were burials on site. The then Chief Rabbi of England was also consulted about the possibility of uncovering Jewish burials. While the initial excavations brought to light the expected graves, there were discrepancies between the Jewbury burials and current Jewish burial practice. For instance, the bodies were found to be interred in coffins that were constructed with iron nails, which is contrary to the tradition that iron nails should be avoided and wooden pegs used instead. Given the conflicting evidence, the issue was referred to the London Beth Din, who ruled that there were no positive grounds that this was the actual site of the Jewish cemetery, or that the human remains found on this site are positively of Jewish origin. The York Archaeological Trust was then given leave to investigate the site as they would other non-Jewish cemeteries, but with a requirement to reinter the bodies within a year. However, once excavations and scientific analysis of the remains was underway, it became clear that the burials were almost certainly that of the medieval Jewish community. In keeping with Jewish beliefs regarding treatment of the dead, the chief rabbi insisted upon the halt of further study of the excavated remains, despite the arguments made by the archaeologists about the knowledge which could be gained. The bodies were transferred to the custody of the Manchester Beth Din and held at the Jewish mortuary in Manchester until they could be reburied in Jewbury. The excavated skeletons from Jewbury Cemetery were reinterred in a nearby area on July the 8th, 1984. The reburial was overseen by Chief Rabbi Emanuel Yakubovitz and members of York's modern Jewish community. An unobtrusive plaque on the side of the car park commemorates the event. The remaining 500 plus burials of the cemetery continue to lie undisturbed under the Sainsbury's parking area. The cemetery was in use from around 1177 AD until the expulsion of the Jews from England in 1290. Prior to that time, Roger of Howden noted that Jews from York were transported to London for burial. After 1177, Jews were permitted by the king to purchase land outside the city walls to bury their dead. It is possible that Jews from Lincoln were buried in Jewbury as well. While it existed in 1190, it does not appear from the excavated evidence that any of the victims of the massacre at Clifford's Tower were buried there. Nearly 500 skeletons were excavated, but it is estimated 
that the entire cemetery contained over a thousand burials. Archaeologists only excavated parts of the cemetery that were threatened by the car park construction. As previously mentioned, most of the burials were in simple rectangular wood coffins with iron nails. The skeletons predominantly were positioned with their arms at their sides, some with evidence of having been shrouded. This uniformity tends to indicate that there were very specific burial customs and that great care was taken when preparing individuals for burial. Also, there were few personal items found within the graves. This is in keeping with Jewish tradition of simple burials. Surprisingly, burials were aligned roughly north-south, unlike the modern Jewish practice of orienting cemeteries east-west towards Jerusalem. Unlike the haphazard burials in York's medieval Christian cemeteries, with graves intercutting one another, the Jubilee graves were evenly spaced. This may be a result of the Jewish tradition of reverence for the dead and the desire not to disturb existing burials. From the spacing, it is clear that graves must have been marked in some way. However, there is no evidence of tombstones or other grave markers. Contemporary accounts of medieval Jewish cemeteries describe them as Jews' gardens, and it is likely that the Jewbury Cemetery would have contained trees and shrubs as well. While not discovered during the excavations, there was probably also a building used for the ritual washing and preparation of bodies for burial. While scientific analysis of the recovered remains was cut short, the York Archaeological Trust was able to report some interesting findings. Compared with their medieval Christian counterparts in York, particularly from the cemetery at St Helen on the Walls, the individuals from Jewbury were slightly shorter on average. The Jewish women also had a greater chance of surviving the perils of their childbearing years to reach old age. Like the rest of York's population, the Jews suffered from ailments such as anemia, tuberculosis and sinus infections, which can all leave telltale traces on bone. In general, the Jewish population seems to have fewer instances of traumatic injuries. Interestingly, one man, approximately 20 to 30 years old, shows evidence of surgery in response to a deep wound to the front of his skull. Unfortunately, his injury was too severe and the man did not live long after the procedure. From the number of burials in the cemetery and the length of time it was used for, the archaeologists have estimated that the median population of Jews in York was 260 individuals. However, it is very likely that the population fluctuated over time with the highest number of individuals in the first half of the 13th century and then rapidly declining in the years prior to expulsion in 1290. It is clear that with more time for analysis, the York Archaeological Trust could have shed more light on the medieval Jewish community. However, in his letter to the York Archaeological Trust requesting immediate reburial, the chief rabbi eloquently states that dignity shown to human remains, even centuries after death, could contribute more than any scientific inquiry to human civilization. The issues raised about respect for the dead, the quest for knowledge, and the appropriateness of development are not unique to Jewbury or to sites associated with Jewish history. It is likely to be a controversy again in the future, though when the Jewbury area next faces new construction or redevelopment is unknown.